Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred song. <laughs> oh, this is crazy, mother. Welcome to Innovating a Game Changer podcast. Today we're talking with Ashley Anderson. She's an actress from Atlanta and she's in Ada and the Memory Engine at the Essential Theatre. So welcome, Ashley. How are you today? Hello. I am lovely. I just ate a big Greek sandwich and it was <coughs> delicious. <laughs> and so you, you, you just came from some photo shoots, is that right? I did. I just had uh, some filming of uh, a couple of scenes and uh, some headshots. Yeah. So I got to play around. So those brand new headshots for anything in particular? Uh, for life of TV and hire me. Hire you, yes. <laughs> so you're currently in Ada in the Memory Engine. So tell us a little bit about that play and how you actually found that play or auditioned for that play and got forward on it. Oh, goodness. Well, <clears throat> the artistic director of a essential theater company, um, I knew him previously. I worked on his show, as in he wrote the show that I uh, worked on when I first came to Atlanta. And then he ended up sending me this script and says, hey, I think you'd be good for this. Read for this. And it's like, okay, all right. And so I read it, and it's stupid magical. It's also written by Laura Gunderson, who is a Atlanta native, uh, specifically Decatur. Mm -hmm. And um, she writes a lot of women in science, forgotten women uh very women-focused plays, which is lovely and brilliant because, you know, you'd figured you'd have more of those being the fact that we are in the 21st century, but, hey, what's she going to do? <laughs> so the the actual Ada and the memory uh, engine itself, is it based on – it's based on fact, right? Oh, yes. So she she truly was – and, I mean, I, I saw it as well, uh, I guess, I guess last Friday yeah. uh, I was there. And um, when I saw it, I noticed that one of the things that it felt like to me was at the end of the play, there was actually, well, we probably shouldn't give away the ending, but, <laughs> but uh, there was some information that helped me understand that obviously this is where the first uh, computers actually came from. Uh, being in technology myself, it was interesting to see that she was one of the founders of that and really worked hard to drive that forward. So that's really the theme behind the play, correct? Oh, yes. She was the first computer programmer. She is the mother of computers. Yeah, it was interesting that they were talking a lot about the loom as well and the punch cards because when I started, the previous generation of programmers were actually using punch cards so it was interesting oh, to see that's that interesting. yeah and uh, there was a lot of underlying current as far as the uh, zeros and ones kept coming up which is very very interesting as well right. and so um it the actors and actresses that are in the play um do you want to give us a little bit of information about them they're lovely human beings um and come from all different walks of life but uh, there are a lot of things that make a show, you mm -hmm. know, they're, you know, the directors, the team that you have on the stage, the script and the team that you have off the stage. So the crew and I do not know what it was, how casting just ended up so serendipitously. Uh, all of these people that I get to work with, it's such I'm so grateful. It's such a stupid blessing. Because there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing worse than going on stage and not having chemistry with the other. Right. Like you can you can act and put on as much as you want, but uh, if you really don't have that sort of underlying frequency, it kind of makes it hard to connect. But everybody on that stage listens and responds and just you know fills you with your moments. Yeah, so you were certainly after the uh, the ep after the episode after the th the the play itself when I came and saw you after you were certainly on a on an extreme high. So um, oh, yeah. it was it was interesting to see the, the that how it affected you personally as well compared with some of the other actresses and actors that were in the play. You certainly were uh, were really thrilled that it went so well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you get into that character itself? I am so. Most people will hear of, especially here in America, the method. Mm -hmm. And when you hear of method, you think, oh, my goodness. So um, who was that guy? Heath Ledger. He died. He mm -hmm. used the method. He was a great actor. Jack Nicholson is a great actor. Mm -hmm. uh, um, um, uh, Dustin Hoffman, all of the Daniel Day-Lewis. And I'm not saying that these guys are not great actors, mm -hmm. um, but the method 
that they use is, in my personal and humble opinion, uh, can be really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like, so there are two different ways broadly to do to act. You either go inside out, which mm -hmm. it means, oh, I feel something, and so that res makes me respond with a, a, a hand flick, mm -hmm. or you say, here. Um, I think I am like a bird, so here I'm I'm trying to figure out what I'm exactly trying to do, and so my hand is going to move, mm -hmm. and then that's going to influence my emotions right. on the inside. Um, and for me, that's what works well for me, because I'm very connected to my body. Um, I've been a dancer ever since I was a kid. I'm uh, very much so using this body as my brush, as a tool. When you read a book, you read the words, and that's what tells you the story. Well, when you go and see a play, you listen to the words. They're already being spoken, so what are you reading? You're reading the person's body. So um, with Ada, I do a lot of, especially when she's young, because I go from age 18 mm -hmm. all the way to age 36, and uh, where she dies of ovarian cancer before cancer mm -hmm. is even a... a a, a thing, word. A thing. <laughs> yeah, a thing. <laughs> uh, and so I u utilize my neck and my head a lot, lot and protrude them forward. Right. Uh, because if you would think of stereotypically like brainiacs, uh, they are the people with the glasses and their head is the first thing that they use, that mm -hmm. they think with. Rather than like if you are a very... Uh, grounded, passionate person, maybe the first thing that's going to come is your heart. And that's where all of your 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 emotions are going to come from. Right. Are you sexual? That's going to mm -hmm. come from your hips, you mm -hmm. know? Like, so where do you put that? And so I use a lot of um, jerky movements at first when she's young. And right. then develop the bird. I mm -hmm. call her a bird throughout that. Because she likes to flit and fly. But then when she gets older, she ends up getting tied down even more. Um, because she's sick and then she's like one a, a bird that's been stuck in a room and is trying to hit the panels and uh, break out but she can't her body's too weak right um, and so she ends up falling yeah I did I did actually notice the difference between the character at the start of the play when you know she was definitely younger and uh, not only in appearance but the, the way you projected her she was a bit flighty she was a bit uh, un, un refined at that point but by the time that uh, further on in the play when she started to reconnect with the the other lead actor she really came th forward as a more uh, mature person so it was very very interesting to see that transition that you took her on throughout that play and it was uh, again it was very very interesting and and um, something that the audience could definitely feel at least from my opinion anyway and my son went twice so uh, yeah. <laughs> I think he really liked it as well <laughs> so um, anything else about this particular play and what are you doing next um come see the play yeah it is closing on Sunday the 27th okay we have a show on Friday at 8 p.m. at the West Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get tickets at EssentialTheater.com. Please come and see us. It's and, a lovely piece. And I'll put links below so that if anyone's watching this and, and is available, you know, definitely go and see the show. Uh, it, it seemed like it was pretty much sold out when we were there. Maybe one seat maybe available left. But uh, I, I know moving forward, if you get those tickets quickly, it'll, it'll, you'll definitely be able to get and see the show. So what are you doing next? Uh, what's the next thing you're... Well, I am actually, within the next couple hours, I am going to be... Um, right now, I am with Synchronicity Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a theater in Midtown, um, ran by women, directed by women, very women-conscious theater as well. We are doing Sense and Sensibility, but it's not Sense and Sensibility like <laughs> you normally see it. Uh, it's physical theater. Okay. So if you think of having, putting the body just as much part of the story um, as your words, mm -hmm. so heightening uh body awareness okay. a little bit. So, for instance, um, we're going to have uh, people, all of these chairs and furniture and things like that, they're going to be on casters, um, which are rolling things. Yep. And so things are just going to be rolling in and out, and we're going to change perception so that it doesn't necessarily look like a play. Okay. And I am the assistant director 
Um, this is my first time being behind the table because I am going to soon, soon being the grand scheme of things, I'm going to be a movement director. Okay. Um, and uh, Rachel May has been lovely enough to let my frantic self <laughs> join her on this and supply her with ideas and i'm so glad that she puts up with me so what it, what's what what's involved in actual movement itself is uh, to uh, how is that come into a play or or a some sort of theater presentation um let's see uh there are nonverbal communication mm -hmm. right um when you walk into a room, and if somebody's slouched over, you get something from that just in general, um, just as a being conscious of where their mm -hmm. body is. Uh, you see somebody puffed out. You get something from that, you know. Um, and what the movement does within a show is utilize that type of nonverbal communication and also apply it to the psychology of shapes. Right. Like, you know, uh, circles are more feminine. Mm -hmm. uh, something that is uh, rigid is more masculine. Um, swirls, what does that mean? The direction of swirls. Okay. Um, and to heighten this f the feeling of the verbiage okay. that is coming through. So is it, uh, it sounds like you've got to do a lot of movements in a shorter period of time. So is there, I mean, how do you deal with an actor that's not doing what you need them to do? Because I, I, I would assume there's maybe in a, a you know, a, a monologue that's maybe a paragraph long, there's multiple movements that are going on. How do you know to cue them in at the right time and what's going to work and what's not going to work? Um, we're coming at it at two different angles. Mm -hmm. So actually what I'm about to do is a workshop um, with the actors of the show. And we are going to, it's called devising. And so you play a game. So one game that we're going to play is around, by, and through, which is literally what it sounds. Okay. You, one person, or you have two people, and one person goes around, mm -hmm. by, and through the other person. You can use those terms loosely. Like, they're just there to guide you and help you give you ideas, mm -hmm. but they're not rigid. And um, you can do anything. And then the other person does it. And so you develop these movements. And then, after you have the movements, you change the tempo. What does it look like if I do something fast? If I'm doing something fast that makes you think, I'm frantic, I'm grabbing, I, am, I need something, mm -hmm. scared, fear. Right. Versus if I'm doing something very slowly that's either timid or sultry mm -hmm. or an eye contact, do I look at the person when I'm touching them or do I look away? Um, am I acknowledging the person who is touching me or am I not? Um, tells a different visual story. And then from those playing with the bodies, what it does is it establishes uh, physical communication contact. Right. Um, so that then maybe you could pick up a person or lift a person in a strange way. Now put lines on top of that. Right. What does that do? What if we had like some sort of choreographed movements from this devised piece and maybe it doesn't look like anything, but then you put, uh, I don't know, uh, Romeo and Juliet on, on top of it. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Right. And you have this girl running around this guy, picking him up and doing things like that. It turns it differently it right. makes it playful like we don't just play with language we also play with our bodies right uh so that's one way of doing it and then another way of doing it is going well i know what i want from this and so then just like a dance mm -hmm. uh you choreograph it and you teach it okay and is there is is it, did you have to learn this or it, it came about over time or, or through classes i am learning it currently <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so this is really going to be a a experiment as well i think over time you'll be able to put a lot of these things in in maybe in your box in your head and then be able to see those things and then think you know draw back on those experiences as you see what works and doesn't work are you looking for the uh, audience as well for that feedback as as, the, as it's being put on uh -huh. I will uh -huh. eventually. Um, I like I said, this is my first time doing it, and that's the reason why I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. Is uh, because I am given the opportunity to be able to take a leap and plunge. Because yes, I'm terrified. Uh, a lot of the times, I don't know necessarily what I'm talking about, but I have this thought in my head that I just need to put down on 
paper, right. aka the stage. You right. know, I need to see what it looks like to see what works and what doesn't work. I need to figure out my proceeds and my process and how what is responded to and right. what is not. Right. Um, and you have to judge the audience on that. Like, does the audience get what you were trying to accomplish or is it to subtextual and right. heady and you just think it's cool <laughs> and so the play you're just in you put a lot of this obviously you were moving around that stage a lot so you it seems like you, you're drawing on this knowledge to to put into those characters yeah. especially again with the transition that i saw uh which was really the transition between the young is it ada yes and the um end of life ada even though she was only 36 when she passed so I, I saw those transitions. I saw the movements. I saw the interaction with the with the audience themselves. Um, one of the funny things was your lead actor. Who was his uh, the character? Mark. Name? Mark's the actor, and uh, Mark's the actor, and, and Charles Babbage. Charles, yeah. So so Charles was actually when he was uh, with you on the left hand side of the stage was looking out. And it was really creeping me out because he's like looking right through me. So I, I'm oh, not sure if he could awesome. see me from the lights, but uh, it was it was it was an uncomfortable experience because I could really feel the emotions that he was going through. And I think that was towards the end of the play. It's definitely on the left hand side of the play. So um, movement, facial rec- you know, facial visualization, and things like that oh, was yeah. um, it was it was quite uh, quite a feeling from a from being in the audience as well. So so not a native Atlantan. No, no, I am from. I am. Uh, I grew up in a theme park. In a theme park. That theme was trailer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-huh. I'm from uh, super south Georgia. Okay. The biggest town that you would have heard of is from Valdosta. Right. Um, uh-huh. But we had to drive 30 minutes to get to a Walmart. 30 minutes meaning 30 miles down on the interstate. Right. Right. Um, but uh, cows and pine trees. Well, I it, love it. <laughs> it, it. It gave you a lot of time to think, I guess, right? To oh, being goodness. out there in the in the quiet. So uh, you're a city girl now. I I I live in the city. Am mm-hmm. I a city girl? I have a chicken and I have a garden. So um, yes? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so so why don't you tell us a little bit about a bit more about your history as far as the number of plays, the, the types of plays you've been in. I, I noticed I'll, I'll stick some links again in the show notes mm-hmm. at the bottom um, to some of the stuff that you've done. So what do you think the turning points, let's just go on the highlights of the turning points of the things that you've been doing in theatre. Turning points. Oh, that's such an interesting question. Mm. I feel like, very seriously, I feel like each and every show that you do is a turning point. Right. Because you have to... You cannot develop a character that doesn't come from you. That's impossible. Like every character that you play anytime is from some sort of truth that you hold within your own self. Right. And so you get to look at your truths and then you get to find one and pick it up and start playing with it. Right. And you start molding it. Um, and so because of that, it always challenges you in different ways. Like um, I got through closing. I was in Richard III over at the Atlanta Shakespeare Company. Mm-hmm. And it was lovely. I played six different characters. And um, I played boys and girls and bishops and, you know, with a whole bunch of different st- statuses and, you know, different things that happened to him just previously. And you, the way that you shift in and out of them mm-hmm. is completely different than, let's say... Um, an ingenue character. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, did a show down at Florida Repertory Theater, and it was called My Three Angels, and it's a show, and I had to have a French accent. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I succeeded with that one, but I tried my hardest. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, So that presented a different challenge, and now I actually have French, you know, in my little repertoire, and musical reviews, you know, you get to stretch your voice. So... Everything that I have done has always been a turning point. Uh-huh. You know, it, you, it's just a market of growth. Right. You know, where are you in your body, in your mind, and in your head when you are playing a different character who's based off of your mind and your body? Right. You know? So ambitions? Oh. <laughs> the world. The world. <laughs> um, oh, goodness. I have so many of them. Ask me tomorrow and... You'll find some other ones at the top of my head. Um, Right now, I am so interested in 
traveling the world and picking up different uh, movement styles from different cultures. Right. Um, because you go to different places in a state, the way that people move is completely different. The way that you walk, people don't think about it, but like I know so many people that's like, oh, I know that's Harry. I know the way that he walks. You know, he's got this little saunter, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But that does something. That's your personality. But nobody like really takes that and pinpoints it. Well, what about the dances? What about the other art forms, the the theater that comes out of these cultures? Like, where does that reside? And w- what does that residence bring up in emotionality of a history, right. of a culture, of a thing? Um, because I really want to explore that and then end up getting an MFA in movement direction somewhere not in the USA. <laughs> so England or somewhere in London, London, Paris, yeah. uh, Italy, um, Germany, Russia. Russia's great yeah. <laughs> for movement. For, oh my it gosh! Is. Yeah, I guess with it, that's where all the the ballets and stuff come from, right? Yeah, I mean, well, think about it. They couldn't speak. Right. Stalin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's another way to bring across an idea? Like you said, oh, yeah. Oh, I can move. Yeah, it's it's actually funny because in the technology world, I work with UX designers and those guys walk around in life and they're like looking at everything, right? And it's interesting to talk to different people and see how they see the world. And definitely you've got to filter on watching individuals movement and 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 got a real connection with that so that's very interesting um do you know what draw draws you to that movement i the first thing i ever did as a kid was dance okay. um like i was steer- like my mom would tell me that i was in like the little baby rocker thing just twirling my hands and my toes and so she signed me up for dance and then I was the snot-nosed kid that always knew the knew better, and so, <laughs> and uh, you're doing the step wrong. I'm doing it right, but uh, and then from that, just the discipline that it also gives you. Uh-huh. Uh, I do believe that there are a lot of children who crave discipline. I believe that most people crave discipline, right. and that gave me a very neat expressiveness um, in small town Georgia. Right. Uh, to utilize and I kind of strayed away from that I ended up sustaining an injury and uh, decided oh I'm gonna be an actor Mm -hmm. and didn't realize how much in my body I needed to be like kind of as a fulfillment of self and recently it's been a another adventure to go oh this 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 avatar that I'm walking around in what can I do with it? Right. So, like, I spin fire. <laughs> I crack whips. You do? Yes. <laughs> I grew up on a, uh, a farming area as well. I used to like the bull whip with the little piece of uh, baling hay on the end of it so it'd crack. So, <laughs> yeah. so it was in- interesting, interesting. I think you'd probably give a lot to you know, the Atlanta community and anybody that's watching as well, you might want to be maybe thinking about putting some of this on online so you can share this craft because obviously there's a passion there for that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's interesting to see different aspects of how people, and when I start to talk to people, how they may not even realize the connection that they got. It sounds like you do realize the connection you've got to this uh, movement, but uh, it, it's, it's something that there's probably people looking out there trying to figure out how to do this and they're not as gifted in that space Mm -hmm. and they're looking for for information so where would you tell people to go right now if they are looking for information and they want to start to learn about dance and movement and how to bring that into theater if they want to learn about dance Mm -hmm. and movement bringing that into theater um if you want to learn about dance you just just do it put on (laughs) some music Uh and sing terribly is fine dancing quote unquote terribly is fine Uh it's a tool Uh spin what does spinning do for you like does it make you happy does it make you feel silly (laughs) does it make you dizzy and make you want to throw up like i don't know like beating on a table like you know that's some sort of movement like what does that sort of thing make you feel like uh you already move, you already do it, you're just not conscious of it. It's not something that you're thinking about. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, I am a, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm a spiritual quote-unquote person, but there's this great 
quote by this fourth century monk. And he basically says that, you know, this is your body and you're using it to cross the ocean of samsara. Samsara being the suck fest that we all live in <laughs> of, you know, uh, expectations, wants, emotions, mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. And so you got to be aware of this thing that is holding all of you. Um, and what does that do for your happiness? Like, you know, they say that if you exercise, you get endorphins. Right. And, you know, it makes you happier. Well, you're strengthening your tool. Play. Just go play. Too many adults get rid of that word way too early. And then they get all stiff upper lipped and like, well, I'm not going to, to play. That's for, that's for children. <laughs> I'm going to sit and rot and watch TV and late night talk shows because that's what adults do. It's like, no, just <laughs> go outside. Uh, get a jump rope. I don't know. Go mm -hmm. do something fun. So it's movement. It's just get in there and do the movement versus is there – so you think that – is there any – academia behind any of this is there is this is there is there like you said there's a method for for acting the method and you know that tries to help people get into character is there is there an equivalent on the on the movement side or for the movement spectrum um yes there is mm -hmm. um there are many different types you know if you do mask work that's one type of acting mm -hmm. you know um there's something called laban that's another type of acting that like breaks down ringing characters like the Joker, pressing characters like Hannibal Lecter until he slashes, which is another one right. uh, uh, that just puts thoughts on these things. Uh, Viewpoints uh, by Anne Bogart. That's another really fun read. And she breaks down tempo, repetition, kinesthetic response. Uh, that's really fun to break down. Meyerhold. Mm -hmm. who is Russian, uh, biomechanics of creating the most efficient movement to bring about some sort of response from your audience. So literally thinking of your body as a machine of input-output and that there is a specific way to be able to do these sorts of things. Right. Um, so thinking of your body abstractly instead of this emotional thing that you are. Uh, think of it as a shape. You were a shape moving through space, period. On, on a ball that's moving through space. On a ball a, that is moving through space. In a galaxy that's moving through space. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally called space. Yes. Because it's space. Yes. So So what's a, are you reading any books right now? Any any favorites? Ooh. I well, I am reading uh the Viewpoints book by Anne Bogart. Um I am constantly a learner, you know, you always have to learn. Um I am also reading uh, Biomechanic Awareness. It's, uh, I can't, there are two different guys who wrote it, but it's breaking down the etudes of Meyerhold and Meyerhold's life. Um, I'm being a nerd on that. And I'm re reading The Gunslinger. Gunslinger. <laughs> by Stephen King. <laughs> it, it Actually, yeah, I really, my favorite book of Stephen King was The Thing, so, um, or Needful Things, actually, mm. was, uh, was, a, was a very interesting read for me. Um, the, the, the book was fantastic. The, the movie, not so much, but uh, it was interesting <sighs> the way he uh, uses the words to really get into your mind and give you those nightmares. So, oh, gosh, yeah. isn't it awesome? Exactly. Now, can you do that with movement? <laughs> Personally, not with my band. Now, but <laughs> I certainly saw it the other night on the stage with you, so that was, that was interesting. So accents, um, you talked a little bit about you had the French accent, and the other night, if I recall correctly, that was uh, was there accents the other night? There were. A received pronunciation <laughs> okay. is uh, the, uh, the, the type of English accent that we are uh, portraying in that one, so... I had to learn to do, you know, the, the standard British dialect. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, th there are different varying degrees of that. So, for instance, it, am I going to say again or am I going to tap my R's? Like, how posh do I want to be? Uh -huh. Or do I want to sit in a carriage? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But my favorite is, like, Liza Doolittle, yeah. like, the co like the Cockney, because basically <laughs> they're just the rednecks of the South, you know? Like... Uh, I, I really feel akin to them. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure that if I was to go up there and to chill with the Neds, like uh, I think, <laughs> I think we'd have some similar stories. Yeah. 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 So what, what's after the next stuff that you're doing? Have you got any other plans like towards the end of the year? 
um, or you're just um, going to see what comes. Well, I have the cardboard piano. Mm-hmm. It's going to be over at Actors Express. It's a beautiful piece, a small cast. It is about uh, a missionary family in Uganda, uh-huh. and uh, I am playing their daughter. And we, I and one of the girls who I end up falling in love with who lives in Uganda, we secretly marry ourselves. Dot, 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 dot. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful story. Um, and then after that, I'm going to Belize. Belize. <laughs> I'm going to stay with the Mayan people uh, in the jungle. Yeah. My sister's an anthropologist, and so she got me an in. So I'm going down there to study their movement culture. So all the brains come from your family then, right? So, <laughs> Man, I don't know. My sister's actually smart. She's the one that became an, a scientist, and oh. I'm the one that's like, passion. I want to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly do a good job about it. Um, if people wanted to get in contact with you you got twitter facebook yes uh facebook uh and in- actually follow me on instagram is probably the most entertaining piece of uh thing that you can follow me on and you can follow me at lotta underscore little because i am a lot of little yeah but you're you're very big personality wise so it makes up for it Make that. It's um a chihuahua I'll, effect i'll also stick the link below for that as well so that they can click that and then follow you on instagram so uh we have been going for 32 minutes so Ooh, no. yes. and i know you've got to get off to uh something this evening so any parting words before we shut down um love and light yeah just love and light well, thank you for joining us. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I'd love to have you back, actually, to talk more in detail about the uh, stuff that you're reading behind the mechanics of movement. That would be fantastic. I, I think there's a lot of interest out there and people just wanting to learn from these podcasts and, and see what's doing. So it's not just telling the story about you know you as an individual actor, but right. it's about how does somebody start to take on some of those personality traits that you, you possess and be able to draw for those characters okay. and things like that. So that'd be great to have you back. Yes. Um, Um, So, again, thanks for joining us, and we'll talk soon. Thank you for having me. All right, bye-bye.